my dog could paint that. This is the first thing that popped up in my mind when looking at a piece of abstract art at the art gala, for it was a canvas smeared with multicolored paint, bearing a price tag of over $500. Anyone would be out of their minds to buy that, I thought. But a few hours later, I was shocked to see it hanging from the hallways of my own home. Over the course of a few months of walking back and forth past it, I realized that the colors didn't seem to be smeared anymore to me, but crashing together in the form of waves. I felt more connected to the piece and started interpreting it in all sorts of ways. Now you may know what abstract art looks like, but do you know what it really is? Well, according to Dean Nimmer, abstract art is the distancing of an idea from objective references. Reference. This means that abstractionalism lives in its own world, separate from the reality that we are aware of. In common types of art, an artist might use a visual metaphor to really show the theme inscribed in this piece. Now, they try to conjure up feelings in unique and uncommon approaches. They also get inspired in unique ways, too. An example of this would be in one of Dean Nimmer's artworks. Now, Dean Nimmer was first inspired by some shadows cast in his art studio, by some pieces of equipment. He then sketched out some negative space that he found was impactful to himself, along with some shapes. And then after doing this, he combined these two aspects to create this painting right here. Now, this can be interpreted in several different ways. Young sprouts dancing in the gusty winds, or even plastic straws fighting the ocean currents. But Dean Nimmer specifically notes that the most important part of the process is the experience. Now, have you ever been to an art museum and judged a piece of art based on its precision or level of difficulty? I sure have. In the Metropolitan Museum of Art, I first saw the painting, Washington Crossing the Delaware, in 1776, and was instantly blown away by the precision and detail. I then viewed the abstract art painting, The Dutch Interior 3, and instantly criticized its simplicity. It wasn't until the tour guide explained the process to which the artist, Joan Miro, went through to create this painting that I truly understood its importance. Apparently, in 1928, Miro made a trip to the Netherlands where he gathered some postcards, each of different eras. Now, these postcards looked like this. And after coming back home, Miro laid these postcards side to side and really compared them, grabbing certain aspects like lines, colors, and shapes and formed the, this painting we know as the Dutch Interior 3 today. Now, he made this painting to really note the importance of evolution. Now, after learning the process to which Miro made this painting, I realized that when a piece of abstract art is viewed, its process and intent used to create it cannot be deciphered by just looking at it. The piece has to be felt through emotions to be truly understood. Now, through both, both personal and other shared experiences, I know that many people use abstract art as a way to communicate and express themselves to other people. These people feel as if they, they can't connect with others through words, but through their creations. An example of this would be in one of Nancy Rook's paintings. Now, Nancy is a part of the deaf community and an avid advocate for deaf culture. She uses American Sign Language to communicate, and how she feels about this is really expressed in this painting right here. The colors smeared together. Now, these people use the freedom of being able to create whatever they want suits their moods and feelings. This is called abstract expressionism. Now, in abstract art, the shapes that are formed might not have a certain purpose, but simply contribute to the overall emotion that a piece gives off. Sadness can leak through streaks of red, fury can be created through graceful clouds, and jealousy can be conveyed through a glossy finish. Everything is within the artist's control. But perhaps the most entrancing aspect of abstract art is the ability to manipulate stereotypical connotations. Jackson Pollock once said, I want to express my feelings rather than illustrate them. I can control the flow of paint. There are no accidents, just as there is no beginning and is no end. In abstract art, the shapes that are formed might not have a certain purpose, but simply contribute to the emotion that a piece gives off. But perhaps the most entrancing aspect of abstract art is the ability to manipulate stereotypical connotations. Take a glance at this shade of blue. What emotion is prickling through your skin, gathering like spiders in your fingertips? 
It may be along the lines of sadness or serenity, but it could also be very possibly true that this shade of blue was the color of your childhood room, your kitchen knife, or even your favorite childhood book. Now, it can be almost guaranteed that none of you are feeling the exact same emotion right now as different experiences have shaped you to who you are. Now, because of how special the concept of abstract art is, more people have begun exploring it over the past few years. Although it's a difficult type of art to truly master, it has gotten so popular that some even consider it a universal language. According to Hannah Brinkman, because abstract art is universally comprehensible and independent of cultural, political, and social context, it can be widely understood. Imagine if people used abstract art as a way to communicate to each other, walking down the street with a canvas in one hand and a paintbrush in another, ready to convey a multitude of emotion with just these two simple objects. That would be pretty cool. Now, as we're nearing up the end of this talk, I just want to open your eyes up to all the potential within the concept of abstract art. What we cannot see by simply looking at a piece of abstract art is the experience and process used to create it. The depths of art really make it a wonderful source of communication and expression. So the next time you come across a piece of art that makes you think, wow, my dog could paint that, just take a little extra time to notice, notice all the pieces that make the art what it truly is. Thank you. Thank you.